Thursday night double header. Later tonight, Thunder and Warriors. An hour from now, we'll get you going with a good old defensive battle between the Bucks and the Jazz. I'm Jared Greenberg. Uh, we're here for a Minnesota-centric uh, set tonight here with, you know, the Hall of Famer, Kevin McCall, the former head coach of the Memphis Grizzlies, Sacramento King, Dave Yeager. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Is this your Minnesota idol? How does that yeah, you work? put me right next to Minnesota guys in a <laughs> very close space over here. You'll hear a lot of intelligent things coming from this side of the table. <laughs> that side, we got some issues. Yeah, but so, go ahead, Joe. Some, some northeast things here. We'll, we'll, we'll learn a lot about ice fishing, <laughs> hunting. Yes, what exactly. What else you guys got? All right. That's it. Uh, let's get you set for the Bucks and Jazz. Second time this month they are meeting. Let's rewind to remind you how the, the November 8th game went down. Boyan Bogdanovich drilled this corner three to beat the buzzer and beat the Bucks. That shot, guys, is the only thing standing in the way of Milwaukee having a 12-game winning streak. Yeah, they started off the season a few, I watched them earlier, a few, few games, and I was like, ooh, what happened to them? Right. A little bit of hangover from being up 2-0 in the conference finals and getting four jammed on your throat by Toronto. Uh, but they really caught rhythm again. I, I, they're not playing the dynamic like just dominant ball that they played last spring. Watching them the last two months of the season, I was like, oh, boy. I mean, it was all downhill. It was all attack, all defense. They were scoring off their defense so much, like their defense was their best offense. They haven't hit that rhythm yet, but they're playing very well. And I thought the Kupo is just a handful. So it's always fun to watch them. Uh, trying to get him d stopped in, the, in transition is impossible. Yes. You've got to recruit guys and just grab guys so he sees no space because once he starts coming downhill at you, and, you know, they've surrounded him with a lot of shooters for sure. So I think, as you said earlier, they're, they're trying to find their rhythm uh, as we are in the early part of the season. Top two defensive teams in terms of defensive rating getting together tonight, Utah one, Milwaukee number two. But also remember this, a bit of a chess match here. Quinn Snyder used to work for Mike Budenholzer in Atlanta does that go into holding the decision on Rudy Gobert to make it public because these two know each other pretty well? No question. You try to hold off as a coach as long as possible, and, and uh, both those guys are good X and O's guys, and they're matchup guys of how they want to set the game up. So he's going to withhold that as long as he could, as he, as he should, uh, and his position because it makes a big difference. Gobert being in there, uh, you know, Brooke's going to try to stretch him out as much as possible, take him out of the paint. Uh, but if he can stay in the paint and try to, try to get some deflections and help on uh, onto the compo, that makes a big difference. Yeah, you know, Brooke Lopez loves when those guys who are fish out of water outside the paint right. guard him. He gets more jumpers because guys like Rudy end up in no man's land. Yep. The, the, the paint pull is so strong for a shot blocker like Rudy that he hangs out in no man's land. And so Brooks wide open and onto the Kumpo scene space. So, it, 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 you know, it, it's, it, it'll be interesting to see how they play this. If I was uh, playing them, I would just tell Rudy, you know what? If we, if we lose because Brooke Lopez makes nine threes, just stay in the paint. Just sprint back and stay in the paint. And I'm willing to, I'm willing to let uh, Brooke Lopez shoot. Let me give you some breaking news. News. Rudy Gobert has just been ruled out for tonight. Well, forget that this tragedy right, I just yeah, had. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, listen, Tony Bradley, I would imagine, would get the start. He got the start over the weekend and, and played pretty well in his first career start here. But I guess the ankle is not good enough to go here. No, I guess, you know, you, you next man up mindset. And, and you've got to try to push guys out on switches. If you can make a small play, Brooke, on the perimeter yeah. and keep your big inside as much as possible. Uh, but once they spread you out like that, he's got seams. He's tough to guard. I think the best thing to do against... Milwaukee in this situation because you don't have your big dominant shot blocking center. Just play small. Play a three man on Brook. Just, just just go small because it's 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 all five are out on Milwaukee anyways offensively. Right. Yep. So you're not worried about getting killed on the glass and all those long jumpers, long rebounds. You have probably guys more more apt to go run it down and see if they'll see if they'll put Brook in the post. You, you never want to miss any of your guys ever, particularly a guy like Rudy Gobert, but does, does this help your, your team learn how to do different things at this point in the year without a guy like Gobert? It can be difficult. The, the season is so long. You're going to have stretches where guys are out. I mean, different teams right now have two and three different guys out, and sure. you're going to have to go through that. That's part of, a, of an 82-game season, but other guys step up. Uh, every guy thinks he should be playing more. Every guy thinks he should be getting more shots. Yeah. We, right? we all know that, and so it is opportunities for other guys. There we are uh, looking at Mike Conley, who's, who's a guy you know well. I, I love him. Uh, great fit for him. Really happy for him and his family. Had a tough start. Had a couple you know, games that are better, but as a team, I think they're still trying to find a rhythm, and that's where they need all their guys to be playing at the same time uh, to get everybody on the same page. Well, Mac, we'll get you more information as soon as we get it, but the big breaking news here tonight, second straight game, the, the Jazz are not going to have Rudy Gobert, and you throw a young guy, third year, Tony Bradley, you throw him in there, and you say, all right, um, good luck you know, against this uh, Milwaukee team, which is one of the more balanced offense and defensive teams in basketball. Yeah, but you know what, though? His, his assignments are going to be 
not it's not a complicated no. system. No. It's five out. You play defense. You know, stay as close to Brook as you can. Give as much help as you can. And you know, if you air air on the air on the side of giving Brook threes, not Antetokounmpo dunks. And then offensively, you know, hey, get open. Antetokounmpo is going to be coming downhill. Present yourself. So they're not going to run any plays for the guy, and it's not going to be. Uh, you know, it, it, it's not gonna be anything. Keep for it him. simple. It's a contact exactly. game. As good yeah. as Milwaukee is, it's yeah. the the simpler defensively you can be, the better yeah. chance you have. All right. If we get some news from Quinn Snyder, we'll bring it to you. But again, the news we're learning right now is that maybe the biggest surprise that an hour before tip off is when we find this out instead of 30 seconds before tip off. But Rudy Gobert will not play tonight. We'll have the Bucks and Jazz for you coming up at the top of the hour. Busy night around the NBA. Let's go around the league and set the table for tonight. The Nets are in Cleveland. Brooklyn four and one without Kyrie. And Spencer Dinwiddie is the Eastern Conference Player of the Week. Nets have won three straight, but is it more about the opponents, Charlotte, Sacramento, and New York, or Kevin McHale? Is it about how they're playing? I think it's how they're playing. They're back to where they were playing last year. I mean, you know, Kyrie, as great as he is, um, I think, what are they, 3-7 and seven with him in the lineup? I think they're 4-1 and one with them in the lineup. So they're, they're, these guys are comfortable playing. They played all of last year kind of with grit, determination, ball movement, and no dominant you know, a guy that just was going to have the ball in his hand a lot. So I think it's up to Kyrie to fit in. But I, you know, I, I give, I give, I give them credit. I give the Nets credit for going out with your top guy out and, and going four and one. I don't care who you play. By the way, Kevin Love is also out tonight. Larry Nance Jr. will get the start really? for Cleveland. What's wrong with Kevin? By the way, he's got an injury. Curiosity. I know, but what is the injury? You know? I, I don't. I, I will get the injury to you in a second. Here. Thank you. Busy night. A lot, a lot of players keep back up here. Mac, thanks for putting me on the spot. I did. I'm going to ask you to cite the rule book here at one point. <laughs> I won't know it. I'll just yeah. tell you I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Pistons are home tonight for Orlando. Detroit has lost six of seven. Magic have lost back-to-back, -back, and again, the Magic will be out without two of their top three scorers, Nick Vucevic and Aaron Gordon. Markel Fultz averaging 14.5 points, shooting 53% over his last four games. Coach Yeager, what's your analysis of how Fultz has played? Oh, he's played uh, much better lately, averaging 14 a game, and they're going to need him. They're 0-6 they're on the road. Uh, this is a, a, a must-have game, early, early season must-have game for two teams that are trying to find their way here. Uh, Detroit needs to get this win at home, and, and Orlando needs to get off the schneid on the road. Mac, you hear that? We are, uh, what, eight minutes in, and we got him to break the coach speak. He called it a must-win game. I, I appreciate that. That's respect right there. Every coach night's the a must-win game. Are you kidding me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, yeah. what was the must-lose game? Well, we haven't seen that one. Pacers and Grizz. Memphis is lost three in a row. Coach Yeager, uh, last week we watched the passing of the torch from Conley to Ja, the Rookie of the Year candidate, leads all first-year players in scoring. Also big news here for the Pacers, Malcolm Brogdon back tonight after Ooh. missing the last three with a back injury. Coach, how much does he mean to Indiana? John Moran is so much fun to watch. Yeah. I, that's, a, that's a team that I, I enjoy watching. Uh, Brogdon coming back, 19 points, eight, eight assists a game. But let's not forget he's a terrific defender as well. A high IQ guy, helped their defense, uh, set the table on offense. But uh, that's, that's big for Indiana. All right, a couple of teams who really need a win tonight are getting together in Atlanta down the street from our studio. Despite Cat and Wiggins, we'll get to uh, Minnesota and Atlanta here. Cat and Wiggins both being among the top 15 in scoring. The Timberwolves have lost four of five. Hawks enduring a six-game losing streak. Cam Reddish dealing with a wrist injury. He will start. Uh, Coach, how, how much does Trey Young need to get the Hawks back on track here? How does he get him out of the funk? Yeah, you know, Trey Young is, is an interesting player. He's a small guy, but he makes a lot of shots. He makes things happen. He's got to just be the guy that pushes that team, drive, push the ball up, play a little faster, try to get some pace in the game. And, uh, you know, he's going to have to score big for this team. I'm not a, I didn't think coming in this year, honestly, that Atlanta would be a very good team. So I, I know, what are they, 4-12? and 12? Yeah, and... I thought they'd be a little bit better, but I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not a big fan. Minnesota at 8-8 eight eight is surprising some people, but Cat has played great. Cat shooting the ball from the three-point land. Like it's going to, I mean, he's shooting the ball fantastic from there. And Wiggins seems to have kind of slipped into the, I'm not going to take bad twos right. routine. Where if he yeah. puts the ball on the floor, he's getting to the paint. Getting to the free throw line. And getting the foul. That's what I was going to say. You know, when you pull up all the time, you very seldom get fouled. If you just put your head up and say, hell with it, I'm going to shoot the ball in the paint, you're going to get fouled going there a lot. Right, let's continue around the league. No Kemba Walker tonight with a neck injury. He's ruled out after that nasty collision he had Friday night in Denver. So without its leading scorer, Boston will host Sacramento. Uh, Coach Yeager, after starting the season 0-5, the former squad, the Kings, have won 7 of 10. What's been different about the Kings of late? Well, a couple things. They, they 
got some payback wins. So they got beat by Utah and Portland early in their five-game losing streak. Uh, got both of those teams. They've come east and, and have had success against the Eastern Conference teams. Uh, Bogdanovich is playing terrific. Uh, and guys are stepping up. Uh, Harrison Barnes had a big night last night. It is the second night of a back-to-back -back, uh, for Sacramento, but with Boston without Kemba Walker, it, it's going to be close. It's going to be a good game. All right, we'll check in on that game here in a bit. Tough night for the Hornets uh, to snap their four-game losing streak. Charlotte takes on the Heat, who are unbeaten at home, and they're angry. They're looking to bounce back yeah. after the getting beaten up over the weekend in Philadelphia. Still no Justice Winslow. Mac. What, what do you expect from the Heat tonight? And, and they're still dealing with all these injuries. How, how do they continue to, sand Saturday, how do they continue to pick up these wins? I tell you what, they got punches.